In this video, we're talking about phase diagrams. We're going to look at two phase diagrams, one for water and one for carbon dioxide. Let's start with what it is. A phase diagram is, is essentially a graph, and that graph on the x-axis has temperature, and on the y-axis, you have pressure. And essentially, what a phase diagram does is it maps out the different phases a substance might, uh, might have at different temperatures and pressures. So in this, in this graph, we have uh, water, and water in all three phases. And if you think about how and when water exists in a particular uh, moment or, or condition, it, it generally is going to be ice at, at pretty low temperatures and uh, liquid at intermediate temperatures and a solid uh, at high, or excuse me, a gas at higher temperatures. So if you look at uh, this graph, essentially, if I look in this area right here, that area, is the lowest temperature range on the scale. And we would expect for that area that this is most likely where you're gonna find um, ice, where it's gonna be in the, in the uh, solid phase. But if I go to intermediate temperatures, temperatures a little bit higher, what you tend to find is areas where water is more likely to exist as a liquid. And so this middle section of our graph or our diagram is going to be water in the liquid phase. And then at, at the highest temperatures, you would expect for um, water to exist in the gas phase. And so typically this is going to be the area to the far right in the graph, higher temperatures, more likely to give us something in the gas phase. But you'll notice it extends even back to lower temperatures as well. And the reason for that is that, that not only is temperature important when you think about phases, but it's also important to consider the pressure that a substance is under. So we experience life typically at one atmosphere, and one atmosphere is marked on this graph. You can see it on the y-axis. It's right here. So I want you to think about what this dotted line uh, represents. At one atmosphere, relatively low temperatures, I have water in the ice uh, phase or solid phase, but then I get to this point, point B, and that is a transition or what we would call a phase change. So if I'm moving from lower temperatures through to higher temperatures, you would call this point, point B, would be a melting point. Now you might ask, why is it labeled as a freezing point then? Because it's got that label on it. Well, that temperature, zero degrees Celsius, actually represents two different points, two different phase changes. Because if I move from right to left, from higher temperatures to lower temperatures, that represents melting, or excuse me, uh, freezing. So going from high temperatures to low, freezing, low temperatures to high, melting. But you'll also see this additional word, normal. And normal is just specifying that it's happening under what we would call standard atmospheric pressure or one atmosphere, okay? If I continue along that dotted line in the liquid phase and continue to raise the temperature, eventually I get to point C. And point C represents what we would call the normal boiling point. Okay, it happens at 100 degrees Celsius. But if I happen to be coming from the other direction, 
point C would take on a different name. We would call it the normal condensation point because it's a gas condensing back into uh, the liquid phase. There are all sorts of ways that you can get a substance to boil or to melt or to freeze, and it's not only dependent on temperature. So I want you to think about this. What if we were at zero degrees Celsius, but at a really low pressure, those particles would be so far apart because of the low pressure that they wouldn't necessarily stick together. And so it's possible even at low temperatures to have water in the gas phase as I do at this point. But what if I started to squeeze those particles closer together? In other words, to increase the pressure. Well, as I, as I squeeze them together, I start to move up on this diagram. I eventually hit this point right here. And that point, I would be transitioning from the gas phase into the solid phase. That's a type of condensation, okay? Think about if I continue along that path. If I keep going up on that path, eventually I hit that normal uh, melting point again. And it's possible to melt ice, to turn it back into a liquid just by increasing the pressure on the substance. Think about if you went ice skating. You go ice skating, you have a very thin blade on, on your skate and you step onto the ice. And as you do that, you're putting an enormous amount of pressure on that ice. And that causes the ice to melt. And you're not changing the temperature of the ice, you're just putting more pressure on it. You melt it, it turns into a liquid and you're allowed to, uh, or you're able to, to glide along on the kind of liquid layer that exists on top of the ice, okay? Same thing can be done with boiling. So if I start at a relatively low pressure over here and I start to increase that pressure, eventually I can cause water in the gas phase to actually condense back into a liquid just by adding pressure to it, okay? Squeezing those particles together, it goes from the gas phase to the liquid phase. There are a couple of other points on here that I wanna address as well. In the first, we're gonna look at something called the triple point. You'll notice that all three lines come together at point A, that's called the triple point. And essentially, what you have at the triple point is a temperature and a pressure where all three phases exist in equilibrium with one another. And what that means is you could have liquid and solid and gas phase water uh, all existing in one, at once, and, and it's a pretty cool um, idea. I'm gonna show you another video momentarily where you get to see um, a substance at its triple point. And it's a little bit, um, it's pretty exciting because it's not something that we get to view every single day. The only other point I wanna talk about is what's called the critical point. The critical point is a temperature. In fact, this is called the critical temperature right here. It's a temperature that exists such that even if I increase the pressure on the particles, they're moving so fast at that high temperature that no matter how much I try to squeeze those particles together, they never go back to the liquid phase. So if you're above the critical temperature, you can't get um, liquid water unless you cool that substance back down. Okay, last thing. Let's talk a little bit about density. Density is uh, something that we've talked about many times. It's a measure of the mass of a substance divided by the volume, but you can think of it this way. Dense substances, the particles are packed really tightly together and um, substances that aren't very dense, the particles are not 
tightly packed together. So let's think about a, a uh, project where we decide we're going to take water in the solid phase as ice and we're just going to increase the pressure on it until it becomes water in the liquid phase. Think about what we're saying there though. We're increasing the pressure, which means we're causing the particles of water, the molecules of water to get closer and closer together. That means that at, at this point right here, we have a relatively high density And down here in the phase of ice, we have a lower density. Particles are further apart. This makes sense. What happens if you put a cube of ice in, in your drink? It floats on top of the liquid water. That's because it's less dense, right? Okay, we're going to stop this video here and we'll catch up on carbon dioxide in our next video. See you soon.